Well, good afternoon. What a treat today on the Audible. Kim Bocamper here with you, with, with you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30. And joining me, number 29, Sam Madison, one of the all-time great Miami Dolphin cornerbacks. And Sam, it certainly is a, uh, a pleasure to have you here with us. Well, thank you for having me, man. Really good show. Always yeah. watching you guys. And once again, you know, we're able to get up here and talk a little bit. Yeah, snack. well, let's talk know. a little bit. You know, you got the <laughs> Cleveland Browns coming to town here, and the Dolphins, uh, you know, got the home opener. I mean, man, this team has been, you talk about being road warriors. Yes. These guys have been on the road. I don't think the starters have even played it down in that in that building because the home game that they had was the fourth preseason Correct. game where most of the starters didn't play. So it's going to be a new experience experience for them and, and a chance to, quite frankly, with a new, with that rebuilt stadium, with everything that that's all about, is is a chance to, to start building a, a true home field advantage, which is something this team really needs to get done. Yeah, definitely, uh, Kim. And you know when we played in there, you know, having an opportunity to really get the fans involved and get the crowd going, it's going to be totally different. Now those fans are directly on top of you. And, you know, you make a big play now, you know, those fans are going to be screaming and they can't wait to get back into that stadium. But yet and still, just the way that these guys have been playing has been fun to watch, mm-hmm. you know. But being on the field very long, long periods of time is tend to wear you down. So I think it's, this is that game where it gives those guys the opportunities to showcase their skills, but yet and still to be able to get in Hard Rock Stadium and have that thing yeah. rocking, man, I think it's going to be fun and I think they're excited. It is going to be a lot of fun. And Just let me know out there, there are still a couple hundred tickets available, so you can go ahead and pick up those tickets. You can go to MiamiDolphins.com or you can go to uh, Ticketmaster and pick up the tickets. The game is going to be sold out, but there's a limited number mm-hmm. of seats available, so if you want to get out there and enjoy the day, go ahead and do that. Well, the Cleveland Browns come to town and you talk about a football team that's uh, you know that's trying to find their way in this league. They're on to just like like the Dolphins. However, you look at this football team, Cody Kessler, third string quarterback coming yeah. in. And, you know, not to say we faced a third string quarterback last week, but a little different situation. Uh, this is a football team looking for an identity, really looking for more players uh, to, to make things happen to this team. And when you look at them, one of, the, one of the star players is their left tackle, Joe Thomas. And when, yeah. you're, when you're pulling out left tackles as your, uh, you know, as your marquee guys, you, you know that you're not hitting it on, on, full, on full all cylinders from the, um, from the skill position situation. But, you know, this is a football team. And look, they're not a good football team. Dolphins are heavy favorites in this one, Sam. But you know as well as I do, uh, you, you can't go in there thinking about this. You've got to go in and, and treat this game as if you were playing the defending world champions. Yeah, and first of all, you got to come out or you got to start fast. Yeah. You're at home, your first home game of the season. And just like you saying, you can't take any team lightly, especially when you're looking at this Cleveland Brown team and they're looking at you. They're seeing the mistakes that yeah. you had. They've seen the slow starts that you have. They're going to try to build off of that. But yet and still, when you talk about the lack of the skill position for this offensive team, you know, as your running back, Duke Johnson from the University yep. of Miami is the third leading wide receiver, you know, targeted on this football team. It's going to be a situation where you have opportunity to get after their third string yep. quarterback and make some plays. And we've been doing really well for us to pass rush and getting after the quarterback on the outside as well up in the middle. Yep. Um, so it, it's going to be fun. But one thing that I think we're going, really going to have to look forward to and, and really hammer down, like I said, Duke Johnson coming out of the yep. backfield, we're going to have to man the middle of the football field because last week, Garoppolo, before before he went out, yeah. a lot of plays down the middle of the football field for a lot of yards. So it's making sure that we sure up that and, you know, really good on the outside. I like him the way that Howard is playing. Yes. I think he's finally going to get his legs up under him because, remember, he didn't play much in the preseason. Legs were a little bit, um, you know, not there yep. for him. Now he'll finally get in there. He was always close to the ball, especially in Seattle. Had a lot of tackles, even close last week. Now he got to get closer to the ball yep. and make some plays on I, the ball. I, I like the way he breaks down to make tackles and, and always stays in position. Physical. He's able to do things. Let's talk a little about on the coverage side. Since you're a cornerback, you've watched these cornerbacks play. Xavier Howard, I think, has been doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Byron Maxwell, you'd like to see him maybe close that gap a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe keep that cushion uh, a little less because you talk about New England and look, New England's been doing look you know, not not to point it at anybody in particular, yeah. but New England's been doing this against everybody, everybody. for years yeah. and years. Those underneath underneath crossing routes, they hit with timing and Garoppolo. You know he's been behind uh, Tom Brady and he's got it down. So people are going to try to do that. The Cleveland yeah. Browns, you would expect them to come out and say, okay, look, we saw this happen last week. We're going to try it again this week. They saw a little bit up in Seattle where they're where the cushion I think became a problem for the Dolphins. Yeah. What do you 
do you do in that situation, Sam, especially with a young quarterback back there, a rookie that's never played in the National Football League, he's getting a chance there. What can you do as a cornerback to try to disrupt him and get him out of his game a little and bit? When you talk about crossing routes and when you play a lot of press, nine times out of ten, they move a lot of stack formations mm-hmm. and you not really have opportunity to get your hands on the wide receivers. And you look at last week, the ball coming out in 2.3 seconds, and that's really quick you know, for a quarterback to get the ball out of his hands. So you have to mess up the time in the routes. And you look at the Vance Joseph style of defense, and you listen to Coach Gates playing a lot of press techniques, something that I love. I yeah. love playing for Coach, Coach Joseph. But, you know, when you get up there, you have to use your hands. Right now, when you play press, it is not designed for you in the National Football League because you only have five yards yeah. to really get it done with your hands. And that is what I'm seeing. There is a lack of not using your hands. Yes, you have all the nice footwork and all the, the skills at the line of scrimmage, but when you want to disrupt a quick-throwing New England Patriots football team, and as you're going to see for the rest of the season, getting the ball out of your hand quickly, you have to use your hands and mess up the timing of the route. And that is what it's going to boil down to. You look at the big play in Seattle, the, the last play of the game, yep. you know, the seven route. Yes, the footwork was there, but there was no messing up the timing of the route. And by the time Russell Wilson dropped back and the receiver ran his right, the ball was already in the, in the air. If you would have jammed that wide receiver at the line of scrimmage, as well as last week looking at the way that New England came up and down the football field with the timing of, and the quick throwing routes, yep. you have to jam, jam those guys at the line of scrimmage, even as linebackers, you yeah. know, knock them off balance just for a little bit, make them have to readjust, and then you'll have opportunity to let that pass rush get you, there for you've you. You've got that. You've got that five yards to work with, and you might as well get as much done in that in that five yards. yards you can. I'm with you. I'm, you know, that 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 getting away from putting your hands on receivers, rerouting them, changing the direction they're going in, making the quarterback maybe pull the ball down a little bit, yeah. especially with teams now. Because look, you know the Dolphins' defensive front. I thought they put pretty good pressure on yeah. Garoppolo early in the game, but much like New England's done in the past, they get the ball out so quickly and you can bet that most of the teams that are going to play following that are going to try the same thing. I think Seattle tried to do it a little bit because when they held the ball, then they had trouble getting out there and you saw Russell Wilson throwing the ball out of bounds. So I I think you're going to see more and more teams, and certainly this football team with a rookie quarterback, they're going to want to get the ball out quickly so that all those passers got to get out get their hands up, but that rerouting could force them to pull it down and allow those guys to come up and, and get more sacks, which would probably lead to more turnovers and give your offense more opportunities on the football field. So I think all those things play into it and something they've got to try to attack this year. This Pass week. breakups, yes. interceptions. When you see Issa Adula Caduz come up with this interception in Seattle, guess yeah. what? That was messing up the time in a route and allowing the defensive front to apply the pressure. So, you know, when, when I talk about, you know, playing press and one of the things that everybody goes back to Pat Sertain and Sam Madison, yeah. what we did, you know, Mel Phillips, he worked with us all the time, getting your hands. Yeah, the footwork is perfect. Everything is good. But you have to allow a little bit more time for – because you talked about uh, the left tackle. Joe yeah. Thomas, one of the best in the league. Guess what? It's going to take a little bit extra time for Mario Williams to get around that corner. So you have to give on from the back end a little extra time as well. That is where the pass breakups, the pass defense yeah. comes into play. But – most importantly, at the line of scrimmage, getting your hands, rerouting these guys, messing up the timing of the route. And as a third-string quarterback, he's going to be looking forward to getting the ball out of his hand right now. Not really involved for us going from read one to read two and read three and coming back to one. He's not you ready know, for he, that he, right he's now. He's going to lock in on yeah, somebody. He's going to lock you're, in you're on know that. where he's going, no doubt. You're listening to the Audible here on Miami Dolphins' Facebook page. Uh, you can send your questions in on the Miami Dolphins' Facebook page. We're also on MiamiDolphins.com. You can also catch us on Periscope's. Sam, how about we take a couple questions here from some of the Let's do it. some of the fans out there, Michael uh, uh, Michael Alberti? How can we get this offense going? Well, I think that's the million dollar question right now. Uh, this offense, once we saw it in the second half get going, both in Seattle and in New England, you saw how how explosive if off, if, how explosive this offense could be, especially with Devontae Parker, right. Kenny Stills, Jarvis Landry, and then you got the tight ends involved last week. You get all that this offense now, but. I think they've got to run the football. They've got to they've got to get the, they've got to establish the run. They've got to get some running to open everything up. And I think Sam, I think that's how they get the offense going. Yeah, definitely getting the running game started first and foremost. Now you're going to make those guys back up. But you know, for me, when I look at Ryan Tannehill, I think he's more comfortable when he already have guys at the line of scrimmage. And he was able to make yes. decisions. So you know, maybe Coach Gates use a little bit, not a very fast up tempo pace, but, but a little more call a little bit more call, call at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Make those guys make the adjustments. 
there's just no other side of the line ball. scrimmage with uh, 25 seconds though, it doesn't mean you have to snap it at 20. Definitely, you got sure. a lot of time there you to make your adjustments, make your calls and stuff like that. I, I agree with you on that. Uh, let's see, Heidi, can we get a two 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 nine 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 from Sam? I'm not sure. I know. I'm not sure. This may be your signature move, Sam. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you take care of this question. I don't know what it really is, but maybe she's want to do a D B. Maybe go. that'll be there it. You go. All right. Will we see more of uh, Kenyon Drake this week? I don't think there's any doubt we'll see more of Kenyon Drake. Uh, I, I would doubt that Arian Foster is going to play in this game. We'll see Jay Ajayi. If he's not effective early, then I think we see a pretty good dose of uh, of Kenyon Drake, which I like because I like to see his speed and I like to see him catch the ball out of the backfield. Yeah, definitely. You know, coming into the season, I always said that Coach Gates was going to use a back by <coughs> committee. You know, when you look at the, the, the different talent that we have out here and you look at Kenyon Drake when he gets the ball and he's out in the open field, but the way he turned that corner, yep. he turned those jets on, you know, really showed Coach Gates something. As far as practice, it's totally different when you get in game mode and as a player sometimes you don't get the maximum out of you in a we always talk about turning on the switch mm -hmm. it seemed like he turned on the switch and if we can get one-on-one -on -one matchups with this kid and get the ball in his hand because he can catch the ball out of the backfield yep. that is somewhere where you can make some plays so I'm definitely looking for him to see him more out there and, and using the power game for his J. And one of the things we're looking for, whether it's him, whether it's Isaiah Pete, who's going to be available, Correct. whether it's Jay Ajayi, whether it's Arian Foss when he comes back, somebody's got to grab that position by the neck Correct. and say, it's mine. I'm not yeah. giving this thing up and you're not going to take me out of here unless uh, until you know I get hurt or something. But And we need some one of those guys to jump up and it, it very well may be a guy like Kenyon Drake, but you're never going to know unless he gets multiple carries in that ball game. And, and there it all boils down to staying healthy once mm -hmm. again with this football team, whether it's the wide receiver with Devontae Parker, if it's at tight end position, or even with Ken Kenyon Drake, you know, throughout the course when uh, of the offseason, we really want, you know, somebody to just jump out and say, hey, this is going to be my starting job and this is going to be my position. But it didn't really happen. You know, Arian Foster was able to come in here, show Coach Gates that he can run between the tackles, run outside, but yet still catch the ball. Something that Coach Gates really likes to do, throw the ball around the yard. But, you know, we lose him um, in the game last week and then Kenyon Drake had to come in and, you know, once again, Jay Ajayi puts the ball. Yep. You know, it's all about having that confidence as a player, but yet and still, for as a coach's standpoint, being able to be dependable, you know, in all facets yep. of the you game. you got to be able to do the basics. You, you, if, you're, if you're blocking, you got to be able to get in yep. position. If you're running the football, you got to know how to hold on to the football. You can't let it go, leave it on the ground. All those things that these coaches are evaluating right now. Don't think that, you know, that uh, Adam Gase isn't evaluating each and every player uh, on this football team who's asked after the game about players and, and this and that. And he said, look, I'm looking, when I look at the tape, I'm looking for the guys that played 60 minutes. I'm looking at the guys that bailed out and the guys that played 60 minutes. And those guys that bailed out, they're not going to be around here very long. And you know what? I think, you know, he's done a good job, I think, since the beginning uh, of training camp. Hard to say with the OTAs because we're, but training camp mm -hmm. of, of, of letting guys know that, hey, look, if you don't want to play, go somewhere else. Because right. I want guys on this football team that want to play, want to win games, and want to be here. If you don't, then go ahead. We'll, we'll find someone to, we'll be all right. We'll be all right without you. And I think he's delivering that message pretty well to those guys out there. So, which, but, you know, that type of a, that type of a, a, a of an approach is kind of a long, is long term thinking. Yep. But in the short term, you know, within a year or so, I think you see those differences really start those the, the, that kind of emphasis really start to pay dividends for and, you. And then, well, you know, having somebody that you can depend on for is Ryan Tannehill mm -hmm. on the football field that know exactly what to do. You saw a couple of times where Ryan had to take some time off the clock, make sure guys are lined up in the proper position, yeah. and still have to tell them exactly what to do. Listen, when the players call, we've gone over through over this all week long. We've gone through it in training camp. We've gone in it, even in the OTAs and yeah. the quarterback school. You need to know exactly what to do. And that's what we talk about, the speed of the game. Understanding exactly what to do at critical times of the football game because it's going just like that. For us, that 25-second clock is running down, everybody needs to be on the same page. and You really need to be honed in when he makes that call and gets it out of his mouth and know exactly what to do. Yeah, uh, Wayne Tillman, will the O-line keep the sacks under 40 for the season? I think, Sam, I think he's been sacked five times. I think he was sacked five times in that first game. A couple of them were in, in, in junk time at the end there, that last 30 seconds where he's trying to get the ball down. I don't think he was sacked at all in last week's game. I, I think this offensive line, as far as protecting him, is doing a pretty good job so far. What I'd like to see a little more out of this offensive line is creating some, some big holes, some lanes yeah. 
for you know no, not creases lanes. lanes for these guys to run through because I think those five guys up front when you look from left tackle to right tackle you got four tackles out there basically playing in the in the game quick feet. they should be able yeah. to quick feet and should be able to get some some pretty good movement at the line of scrimmage really really like it because now we're able to get all five guys out in the passing yeah. routes and you don't have to leave anybody in it's going to put more pressure on the cover guys so doing a really good job with the passing lanes and and holding up for Ryan like you said and a lot of those sacks came at junk time later in the football game and Ryan holding on to the ball trying to get some big plays down the football field but for the most part if we can keep these guys healthy and, and have all five of them out there I think we'll do really good but one thing that we really must do Bo, and, and you, you know you talked about it and, we, and it's visual as well we have to open up some running lanes and yep. make those guys back up a little bit or come forward and now that's where the real play action is able to come in you look at the way the, 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 the last game went for his play action for yep. his uh, Garoppolo because they were running the ball yep. successfully guess what he was able to boot outside and those linebackers were biting up because they were running the ball in a tight end 10 to 12 yards down the field wide open in yep. 8 to 10 yards before anybody had opportunity to touch him so that is something that we really most harp on and really have opportunity to open up some holes yep. for these running backs but you know it's going to be by a running you, back you, by committee you, you know you like you like to get this game going with a, with a drive you know a 75 yard drive whatever it is uh, and, and have you know 10 plays and you know maybe maybe four four runs and six passes yep. or something like that you, you don't want to get that balance going or near to it but but I, I'm with you the running game has got to be a big part of it uh, you're listening to the audible here Kim Bo Camper Sam Madison with you you can see us on uh, Miami Dolphin Facebook page you can also catch us on uh, MiamiDolphins.com and on Periscope Sam here's one for you we t- touched on a little bit uh, Josh Ferris says Sam what's your take on Xavier Howard and all the DBs out there so far well really like Xavier Howard you know one of the things we didn't really get to see him a lot in the preseason and you know, for as when you have a knee surgery, Kim, and, and you really have to get your legs up under you. Now he's understanding, he's feeling the, the speed of the football game. And he's played two different quarterbacks right now. First, you have a guy where I always talk about this plaster, plaster, pass, plaster with Russell Wilson mm-hmm. being able to evade the, the, the pass rush, extend plays down the football field, not peeking in the backfield, staying with your coverage and getting down the field and making sure that you're in that right coverage. He's been really, really close mm-hmm. on a lot of these passes but you know when you talk about having that surgery being able to come and transition in and out of your break we haven't seen the real Xavier Howard that we saw at, at, at Baylor coming out of that break and making plays on the ball having that bounce exploding going to get the ball up at his highest point you know so it's going to be fun to really watch this kid as he grows you look at uh Issa Abdullah Caduce he's yeah. coming in um very good. I like the range that we saw in Seattle. You know, now when you get in that one-on-one cover situation, I'd like to see a little better coverage, but, mm-hmm. you know, now we don't have to re- use Richard and drop him back in there. He's where he really is feel comfortable, which is in the box, covering those tight end, have an opportunity to fill that void. When that run does bounce back, he's there to make those big hits on those running backs and tight ends. So, you know, and, and you know, it, it's just fun to be able to watch these guys, but, you know, still have to make more yep. plays and you still have to come up with those big plays versus if it's in the press or if it's in the pass a little bit more because you're getting some really good pass rush. We always talk about, Kim, you know, it, it goes one hand washes the yeah. Yeah, no you have a good pass rush. You have a good secondary. Yep. That creates a very good defense, and it takes some pressure off your linebackers. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Jason Stavros, he's on every day. Jason, I think, sends in a question Stavros every day, doesn't he? Stavros. He's Which a regular. One? Stavros? <laughs> Stavros, Stavros. I guess if it's if it's Greek, it would be Stavros. Stavros, if it's something else. I'm not going to ask you, you know, figure it out, but he's a regular, and we like to have you guys yep. uh, send your questions in. It says, Ryan has played well. Why do all the fans think that he hasn't? Uh, my answer would be 0-2. Oh, yeah. That's why. Because, you know, judges, you know, quarterbacks, quarterbacks, you know, you can judge quarterbacks a lot of different ways. You can judge them on stats. You know, pass completions, pass completions, yards per completion. Uh, you know, all those types of things, touchdowns versus interceptions. But when push comes to shove, quarterbacks in the National Football League are judged by one thing: wins and losses. Wins and losses at the end and, of the day. And so until until that win loss record gets to be on the positive side, then I think Ryan is going to have his detractors out here. I, I think that's the the bottom line. And, and when you look at the guys that's in the top five right now, they always look at one thing: having that winning drive multiple yep. games in those winning drive 
taking the ball on your shoulder when you have to drive the ball 70 yard, 75 yards down the football field and you only have two minutes and, and 13 yep. seconds left, making plays, being able to not utilize all your timeouts if you have to, but pushing that team down the football field, putting everything on your shoulders, on your back, and making the plays down the football field. That's the one thing. And then when you look at the the offseason, he signed a big contract. People look at that as well. Yep. I mean, people, you, you can say what you want. When you get that contract, people expect a whole lot from you. And that is what they see. And, that, that, and, and it comes down to it. What have you done for me lately? Have you won any football games for me in critical situations? Yes, you made plays here and there, but you have to, just like you said, Bo, it comes down to wins and losses, and that is the problem right now. No matter who the wide receivers or the running backs out there, they expect you to get it done. When you look at football yep. teams, and you, we talking about the Cleveland Browns, and, and, and their number one guy is a left tackle. Majority of these football teams come down to the quarterback play, and that is what's going to get you over the hump and into the playoff, and that is what's holding everybody from really not falling in love with Ryan Tannehill. Sam, the other thing I believe, I really believe that this football team and Ryan Tannehill, I think they're on the same tangent as far or the same parallel as far as I'm concerned. They got to learn how to win football games. Yes. In a great example, no, no better example than the first week up in Seattle, where the Dolphins had every opportunity to win that football game. You know, they left points on the field. Correct. Certainly, you missed a, you had a field goal blocked. Mm -hmm. You had a drop ball that would have, look, had it not gone for a touchdown, you're at least going to get three points out Absolutely. of it. And then you go on fourth and inches, you don't make it, so you lose another three points out there. But what you know, but 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 what you had, you know what Ryan did exactly what he had to do in the fourth quarter. Correct. Took it 86 yards, yep. gave him the lead, yep. and I thought, well, that's the Ryan Tannehill we're looking for. Correct. In the fourth quarter, when you need to, to make the play, you make the play, and he took it in himself for the touchdown. But then here comes Russell Wilson, comes back. They know how to win. The Dolphins don't quite, and that's the difference. You know, they all the all we needed was one play there. But you know, I think when if you were in that stadium, you kind of knew Seattle was going to go. They just kept. There was never there was that bounce in their step. There was that confidence when they came to the line of scrimmage. You could tell what was going to happen there, and you've got to flip that around. You know, Ryan's got to be the guy that gets that touchdown. You've got to put the game away, and then the narrative of that game is a hundred percent different Correct. than what it is, and the narrative on Ryan Tannehill is a hundred percent different. So you know, is is important it is for for each individual to do, but this team has to learn how to win games. And it's easily, you know, it sounds it sounds elementary, sounds easier said than done, but maybe for a team that's struggled, a franchise that's struggled as long as this one, not so easy. They've got to figure out a way to do it. Yes, you definitely have to figure out a way. And, you know, we go and we look a couple of times, like you said, in critical situations, especially in that Seattle game. Yep. Ryan did. He took that ball down the field, something that we wanted to see, and he punched it in. In a hostile environment, the 12 men, they were going crazy. Crazy. They had opportunity, and then you come back as a defensive guy. You know, you, we've been in some yeah. really tough games. You put it on your shoulder. Listen, we have the win. Let's go out here and let's get the stop, get the ball back to the offense, and then we can be able to run the clock out in the best play in football, which is the kneel down play. Yeah. That's what I want to see from this football team. Once again, last week, you have opportunity. You're in position to go out and win the football game, and you know with a third-string quarterback – Bill He's Belichick run, is run, not going to put them in a situation yep. to throw the ball and then because he wasn't really throwing the ball really well yep. anyway um, he did throw a couple of good passes but no we're going to do what we do best that's run the ball run the ball you have to get out the football field in that situation give the ball back to your offense give it back to Ryan Tannehill let's see if you are the person and, and, and the quarterback that we want to see and we're going to do our job and give you the ball back and we didn't come up with those stops and like you said you got to find a way as a team yep. to get over that hurdle. Along with Ryan Tannehill, everybody has to be involved in Everybody has to believe. Don't have one guy hanging his head and the other guy hanging his head. Yep. Everybody has to stand together, and we have to do it as a team. That's right. This is the Audible. Kimbo Camper, Sam Madison with you. Facebook, Miami Dolphins Facebook page, MiamiDolphins.com. Catch us on Periscope. Uh, E Eon Parsons, how is uh, how have Kiko Alonso and Jordan Phillips played this season? In your opinion? I think Jordan Phillips has played extremely well. I think he's done a good job out there, and I think when you lose uh, Earl Mitchell uh, to the calf injury, now he's getting the opportunity to play more, uh, and, and he's making plays, and, and you like to see that. Kiko Alonso, I think he's the leading tackler, one of the leading tacklers in the league right now. I think he had 11 and 15 last mm -hmm. week. Uh, I'd like to see him kind of shore up his coverage a little bit maybe. Yeah. Uh, and some of those tackles, we'd like to see him a little more, a little closer to the line of scrimmage. 
but that's kind of my opinion on, on those two guys. Jordan Phillips, I'm really, yeah. really excited about this kid. You know, you look at that first game in Seattle, man, from his push, he was pushing that guard into yep. the backfield, and now that allows a lot of different things. And you talk about the 11 tackle from Kiko Alonso. He's getting the push now. Now that running back have to make that bounce, and Kiko, a pure linebacker in a sense, meaning he understands where those holes are. He takes that extra step back, and he's able to get there. You know, not one of the biggest linebackers, but Zach wasn't one of the biggest. Yep. It's all about instincts, and it goes about your front line and, and, and making those holes available for you to get in and out but I think Jordan Phillips man he is yeah. doing an awesome job and and Dominican Sue taking him under yep. his wing you know a couple of things that he can do sometimes he just takes off and he gets washed yep. he'll eventually get that if he's able to put that foot in the ground and be able to fight back yep. and not allow those holes to be it'll be a lot more plays to be both made of those, both those guys get a nice push at the line of Definitely. scrimmage and then creating a situation where people have to readjust where they're, yep. where they're going in a in a running game quarterback and get, not being able to step up like push like, up there, yeah, like on before. the pass rush. No, no doubt about that. Uh, so, so we're seeing some some good stuff there. And Kiko's blitzed a couple times and uh, yeah. and made some plays. Uh, man, but that leads me a whole different thing about when's, what's in the grasp and what isn't in this league anymore. You're absolutely correct. You know, that, that, yeah, he was forcing them back. And yeah, then, I, I don't know. I really don't know how you play defense in this league anymore. Head really to head tough. contact on the one ball that was dropped. Correct. Receiver goes down to pick he it up. He dropped his he head. Didn't... I mean, come on now. That, that, that's making that's too much on a, on a yep. defense on a, on a defender to do that. Uh, Sam, before we close up, I got I got I got I got a little something I got to talk about here. Um, you know, Sam, one of the great guys, one of the great players from Miami Dolphins, one of the great guys I've ever been around. I wish I'd have been had a chance to to be a teammate of Sam Madison's. And uh, Sam's daughter uh, has been having kidney problems for 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 years now. Yeah, um, uh, in December before the um, the fiftieth anniversary. Yep. Yeah, so this is last um, year. Yeah, she was on dialysis and this and that. And Sam's yep. moving a little. Sam's moving a little gingerly these these uh, last couple of days because uh, last week he donated his kidney to his daughter. Yeah, man, it, it was. Well, what awesome. a, Sam? What I got to tell you? What a what an amazing amazing gift that that is and for you to step up and do that for your daughter i'd like to think that every dad would do that to his daughter for their daughter if they need be uh but you had to do it and you did it and stepped up and man i tell you i can't i can't give you you know i, I love you as a guy I, you're over the top for me now after that uh, so man i i just got to tell you that that is an amazing amazing thing that uh, that you were able to do and there's millions of people across this country right now that's sitting waiting for kidneys and you know it's just one of those situations where you know i was a perfect match for my daughter yeah. and like we talked about it happened in december a little girl that was you know four or five days a week doing gymnastics one of the happiest little kids and then all of a sudden you know a rare thing happened yeah. to her so you know going for dallas is three days a week over the course from uh late december all the way until a couple of weeks ago, yeah. you know, I was the perfect match for her. I went in, um, I, I did all the testing, and it was like, hey, and they called me a week in, week before. It was like, hey, yeah. Sam, can you um, can you guys have the transplant? I was like, uh, yeah, we can do it next week. It was like, uh, you was a perfect match. I was like, okay, let's do it. You know, I had probably 12, 13 surgeries, yeah. bowl, you know, throughout the course of my careers. And once I finished because of football, this was the only one that I was looking yeah. forward to. Yeah. And uh, it, 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 it turned out really good. So right now she's home. Um, she's doing really well. Like you say, I'm moving around a little bit slow, but yep. every day I'm getting better. And you know, just for people out there, you know, when when you go to the to to sign your driver's license, yep. they ask to be a donor. Listen. I, once you're gone, you're gone. Yep. And, and if you can sign off and say, hey, to save somebody's life, man, listen, it'll put a big smile on their face as well as other uh, family members across this country. So, man, thank you for yep. the platform. No, no, but, man, it, it, it's it, really good. You know, the, the, the great thing, Sam, is that uh, you're doing fine. She's doing fine. And, and you know, to, to know that your daughter is not going to have to go through dialysis now yeah, because man. of this. Um, but that, that's just got to be such a such a great great feeling for you, for her, your wife, your whole family. Um, what an amazing amazing thing! And I, I, I like I said, I can't, uh, you know, I, I just think so much about you even before this, but uh, with this, and I know there's all you know, a lot of people. I just started coming over the. Uh, we're getting to wrap it up here, but uh, coming a lot of people calling in and you know saying they're sending your prayers and this yeah. and that. But uh, uh, you know what what a wonderful thing, what a wonderful gift. Yeah, to I didn't really talk about it, you know, much over the last few months. Yeah. Um, but a lot of everybody at Defense Siders knew. And, and mm -hmm. the Dolphins organization yeah. because I explained to them and you know thank you for all the well wishes for the people that did know um, and you know and all your prayers and you know it 
having the opportunity to do community service, yep. but yet and still to be able to go into that hospital every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and see the other kids that was in Joe DiMaggio yep. Hospital, you know, my heart goes out to those, and hopefully one day they'll be able to get the kidney as well to be able to live a, a long and fruitful life. So thank no, you. No, okay, let me move on to something else. What up? What happened with Louisville, man? How what Louisville, you mean? What happened? How did Louisville come in and tan the hide of the Seminoles? Have been? Whoa, man. Come on, man. What the heck up, happened man? there, man? Hey, listen, man, it's been we a were long flying time. Up. We were flying yeah. up. And I go on, oh, they're they're trail now they're trailing, yeah, Florida State's trailing. trailing. Yeah. Then I go we'll then we back. then we land before we you know you, no, you know you're about five on. minutes before you land up and the word starts coming out. Just pour it on, man. 60, Listen. Woo, yeah, Sam. we we had them a couple of years go um, you know, at halftime and yeah. they'll come back team, they're resilient. And when we saw it in the first game against um Ole Miss, so you know, for us we just had to keep on going and, and there was uh something that Coach Petrino yeah. he's had on his mind, um, you know, to get a football team to be able to compete in the ACC yeah. and and, and everybody knows uh, Louisville as a basketball team. We wanted to put them on the map as a football team, and we had opportunities. Now we just have to keep on building. So it's fun. And, and you look at Lamar Jackson right yeah, here yeah, right, from right um, down here. from Boynton Beach High School, man, a tremendous kid. I had opportunity to meet him. Um, he's doing really well, and hopefully he can stay healthy, and these guys can keep going. Sam, it's been a pleasure having you, man. Thank you. We'll have you again. Yeah. I know the fans out there are going to want to see you again, so, so we'll have you back. That's going to do it for the Audible today. We'll be back on Friday, Monday, Wednesdays, Friday, 4.30. You can always see us on the Audible. Check it out. You're not going to never guess who's going to be here with us next time. We'll see you then.